In this video, we will explore the uniform circular motion of a tennis ball as it is attached to a string and whirled in a circle. We will also see how we can use this apparatus to find out mass of the tennis ball. The apparatus is fairly simple. Tennis ball is attached to a string which passes through a tube. Some weights are attached at the other end of the string. This blue tape attached to the string just below the tube is actually movable and it serves as a marker for constant radius. When we are swinging the ball in a circle, we want to keep the radius constant. And as long as the tape will stay just below the tube, we will know that the radius is approximately fixed. When we change the radius, we will move the tube and slide the tape accordingly. So how do we swing the ball using this apparatus? Begin swinging by holding both the tube and string below the tube. Once the motion is stable, let go of the string. Finally, your hand should only be touching the tube. The hanging weights create tension in the string and this tension force is the centripetal force responsible for the motion of the tennis ball in a circle. Tennis ball can swing at a fast pace like so or at a slow speed like this. Now we ask the question, what parameters can be changed in the setup that will affect the speed of tennis ball? We can add or remove slotted hanging weights here that will change the tension and thus the centripetal force. We can increase or decrease the radius of the circle in which the tennis ball is swinging. We can also change the mass of the tennis ball by perhaps adding sand to it or by attaching two or more tennis balls in tandem. How can we use this setup to find mass of the tennis ball? We need to analyze the forces acting on the ball. Tension due to the hanging weight is the centripetal force. This tension is calculated by multiplying the hanging mass here by G. Centripetal force also equals mv square over r. Note that the mass here is mass of the object that is swinging, so it is mass of the tennis ball. Replacing fc with ft and ft is equals to mhg. By manipulating this equation, we can figure out mass of the ball if we know the hanging mass, the radius, and speed. How can we measure speed of the ball? We know that it moves in a circular path at a constant speed. Speed equals distance per unit time, and distance covered is the circumference of this circle. So speed is 2 pi r over t, where t is the time of one revolution. How can we measure time for one revolution of the ball? Starting and stopping the stopwatch for just one swing will produce error in measurement. It's better to measure time for say 10 revolutions and divide that time by number of revolutions to get the time period, which is the time of one revolution. What are the sources of error in this experiment? The major theoretical assumption we have made is that we are considering the string to be horizontal and assuming that all of the tension force is responsible for centripetal acceleration. In reality, only the horizontal component of tension is producing centripetal acceleration and vertical component is balancing out the weight of the ball. Using similar geometric reasoning, we can see that the radius of the circle in which the ball rotates is not the same as the distance from the center of the ball to the top of the tube. The actual radius will be smaller. In our analysis, we also ignored air resistance and friction present between the thread and the tube here. Moreover, maintaining a constant radius is not easy and this marker tape may slide up or down. If it moves up and touches the bottom of the tube, there will be friction here as well. There will be uncertainty in measuring radius and error in measuring time due to reaction time of starting and stopping a stopwatch.